The Houston Option. The following video is intended to introduce members of the Houston Fire Department to a new method of two and a half inch hose deployment for high rise incidents. This method was not developed by a PL in New York. It was not developed by a Jake in Boston or a private from Phoenix. The Houston Option was actually developed in Houston by Houston firefighters for Houston firefighters. Around the department, there currently seems to be three commonly used methods for two and a half inch hose deployment in a high rise fire attack. Method one, unfortunately, is the, we don't really make high rise fires in my district, so if we happen to make one, we'll figure it out when we get there method. Obviously, this isn't a method that is likely to end in a very efficient fire attack. Method two involves placing all four 50 foot bundles on the ground and connecting them together and then unstrapping them. The hose is then pulled up and down the staircase by personnel under the coordination of the captains to achieve the desired hose placement. And finally, method three, which seems to be the most common, involves two pumper crews shouldering the hose split amongst the four firefighters. Once the floor below the fire is reached, the fire attack group moves out of the stairwell onto the floor below. The firefighters are lined up and the sections of hose are connected end to end. Then the two captains coordinate the movement of the four firefighters, flaking the hose up and then back down the stairs. While both method two and method three are effective methods, they do require a lot of coordination between the two captains, as well as a lot of direction from the captains to the four firefighters. These two different processes used to flake out this hose often become convoluted, even with firefighters that are familiar with them and have practiced them often. Convolution quickly turns into confusion and confusion increases the potential for firefighters to get into trouble. The Houston option has that name, the Houston option, for a reason. While much of this method is prepared at the station before the call ever comes in, it is still a very versatile deployment method. Its versatility allows for several options in initiating a fire attack and modifying tactics during fire attack and an overhaul. The Houston option offers four different deployments in one package, all while simplifying deployment. Simplifying the process allows the captain time to assess the IDLH environment before beginning the fire attack. In the end, the Houston option offers the following benefits. It's faster, it's easier, it's less confusing, it offers flexibility in hose lengths, it requires fewer members to deploy, it does not require waiting on the third in engine to be deployed, it requires very little instruction from the officer even with fill-ins unfamiliar with it, and it affords the officer an opportunity to plan his or her attack during the hose deployment instead of worrying about coordinating personnel and beginning planning their attack as they begin the attack. Now we're going to start with a side-by-side -side video comparison of the traditional method in the upper right corner and the new Houston option in the main screen. The scenario in both of these videos is a fire in a high-rise. Time stops once the nozzle is opened in the doorway to the fire floor. As you can see, the first lineman is carrying a 100-foot bundle. This bundle is obviously heavy and for this reason tool assignments have been modified to free this firefighter of any other equipment except for a flathead axe. In the traditional method video, the fire is simulated to be on the fourth floor, and in the Houston option method video, the fire is simulated to be on the fifth floor. In just a moment, you'll notice that the captain drops an orange bag on the floor. This bag contains a pre-connected water thief and pigtail. There is some debate about employing the water thief and it is thus at the discretion of the district chief as to whether or not it will be used. The captain just gave the following instruction to the plugman. Go ahead and catch the standpipe and bring me the male coupling. Provided that the plugman knows how to catch a standpipe, this is all of the instruction that should be needed at this time. You can now see the captain's bundle on the floor to the right, and you can also see the captain assisting the first lineman with removing the straps from his bundle. Once complete, the captain will anchor both of the couplings while the firefighter walks up the stairs. This is a simple process, but does require a little bit of instruction if the firefighter is unfamiliar with this method. Captains, begin by ensuring that your firefighter has the hose on his or her outside shoulder. Then instruct them to stick to the outside edge of the stairwell as they ascend. 
they should not push the hose off of the back of their shoulder, and they should also not allow the hose to roll off the side of the shoulder. It must deploy by being pulled off the back. Once they have reached the end of the hose, they will return to the fire floor, pushing the hose in the stairwell up against the outside walls. Notice that the captain is waiting for the first lineman to return, and for the plugman to bring up the coupling from the standpipe. This time waiting is a huge benefit to the Houston option over the other methods because it is actually time that can be used to assess the environment and determine the best method of attack. From the 1 minute and 53 second mark to the 3 minute and 13 second mark, a full minute and 20 seconds, the captain is free to assess his environment. In other methods, the captain's first look at the IDLH is as he initiates the fire attack and commits to the fire floor, whereas with the Houston option, the captain can feel the door to the fire floor for heat and even crack the door to get an idea of what awaits on the other side while the attack line is still being deployed. Complete our hookup. Be ready to to advance on the fire. Go ahead and get on that nozzle, Gabino. Head back downstairs, not my word. Charge the line. The captain instructs the plugman to head back downstairs and on his word, charge the line. The plugman returns to the standpipe and charges the line once instructed to do so. He also is expected to monitor the pressure gauge to ensure that the fire attack group is receiving adequate but not dangerous pressures. Though not shown here, the second in pumper should not make entry into the fire floor without the third in pumper present. Now if you were watching closely, you notice that only 150 feet of 2.5 inch hose has been deployed. This was intentional and will be discussed in the upcoming slides. After only four minutes and eight seconds, the line is deployed and the fire attack group is ready to flow water. The Houston option, purpose. The Houston option is designed to remove some of the confusion found in the stairwell during high rise incidents. This objective is achieved by having the majority of the work done at the station before the call even drops. Pre-incident setup. Preparation is key to this operation. It isn't difficult to prepare, but will likely take some practice to perfect. Pictured here, from top to bottom, are the Houston Option bundles, which are designated. The Captain's Bundle, the Plugman's Bundle, and the First Lineman's Bundle. The Captain's Bundle. The captain's bundle is a standard 50 foot section of 2.5 inch hose bundled in an accordion style. The male coupling should have a smooth bore nozzle with stacked tips attached and both couplings on the same end of the bundle. This is primarily unchanged from current practices. The plugman's bundle. The plugman's bundle is a standard 50 foot section of 2.5 bundled in an accordion style with nothing attached to the couplings. This too is unchanged from current practices. The first lineman's bundle. The first lineman's bundle is a single 100 foot bundle that consists of two 50 foot sections connected at one end and packaged in a double accordion style. The open male coupling should have a smooth bore nozzle attached with a 1.5 inch to 2.5 inch increaser instead of stack tips. Care should be taken when pack packaging this bundle to ensure that the ends of the Velcro straps are not on the underside of the bundle when carried. Responsibilities. As the various names imply, each person on a single crew will typically be carrying one bundle apiece. Each person will have a task that they are responsible for, and the captain will have the responsibility to ensure that the members of his or her crew properly complete their part before committing themselves and their crew to the IDLH. Responsibilities. Plugman. The plugman will be responsible to carry the plugman's bundle as well as the bag containing the high-rise connections to perform the standpipe hookup. He or she will be expected to perform a standard standpipe hookup on the floor below the fire. After this task is complete, the plugman will flake out his or her respective section of hose from the floor below the fire to the fire floor, where the mail coupling will be made available to the captain. He will then return to the floor below to become a, the standpipe operator. Responsibilities captain. The captain will be responsible to carry the captain's bundle and the pigtail or water thief, if being used, to the fire floor. Upon reaching the floor below the fire, the captain will drop the pigtail bag, 
water thief bag and instruct the plugman to connect to the standpipe and then bring the male coupling up to the fire floor. Upon arrival at the fire floor, the captain will place his or her bundle on the landing as out of the way as possible. This bundle comprises the option and will be addressed later in this presentation. The captain will then assist the first lineman in undoing the straps on his or her bundle while it remains on the firefighter's outside shoulder. If placed over the air pack, the captain will help move the bundle to the firefighter's shoulder before releasing the straps. The captain will then grasp the two free ends of the bundle, which should be on top and should include the two and a half inch nozzle with the increaser. At this time, the captain will then instruct the first lineman to advance up the stairs, allowing the hose to feed off the back of his or her shoulder. Also, the captain needs to instruct the firefighter to not allow the hose to roll off of the side of the shoulder or push it off of the shoulder as these actions will increase the likelihood that the hose will tangle and become difficult to manage once charged. As the firefighter progresses upwards, the captain can then assess the situation on the other side of the door to the fire floor as well as connect the male coupling from the floor below to the female coupling from the first lineman's bundle. At this time, 150 feet of 2.5 inch hose is deployed and ready for fire attack. Responsibilities First Lineman The first lineman will be responsible to carry the first lineman's bundle to the fire floor. Upon arrival at the fire floor, the first lineman will receive instructions from the captain as well as receiving assistance in removing the straps. Once the hose straps have been removed, the firefighter shall continue walking up the stairwell, allowing the hose to pull off. The rear of his or her shoulder until all of the hose has been deployed which should be about the next floor landing he or she will then be responsible to move the hose against the outside wall of the stairwell on the way down to avoid the hose tangling under the center railing options of the houston option option one use the initial 150 foot of two and a half inch with the open nozzle and the inch and a half to two and a half inch increaser. Option two, deploy and add the captain's bundle of two and a half inch with stack tips for better reach and penetration. Option three, adding two and a half inch line to the nozzle after fire attack has been initiated. Use straps to prevent the line from being closed unintentionally. And option four, adding inch and three quarter line to the nozzle for mop up or possibly writ applications. Again, Use straps to prevent the line from being closed unintentionally. Option one, if the fire is at or near the door to the stairwell, the captain may choose to advance with just 150 foot of hose with the nozzle and attached increaser. This does not quite have the reach or penetration of the stack tips, but does put out an enormous amount of water. This nozzle, nozzle arrangement produces a good stream of 40 to 50 feet at 50 PSI nozzle pressure and approximately 440 GPMs. If the captain decides that the reach of the stack tip is required, the tips from the captain's bundle may be removed and attached to the first lineman's bundle nozzle. Option two, if the fire is determined to be far enough away from the stairwell that the entire 200 feet of hose is needed, the nozzle with the increaser is removed. The captain's bundle with the nozzle and stack tips is now attached to the exposed male coupling and the 50 foot of hose can be stretched in the hallway or the stairwell depending on the conditions found. If bundled properly, both couplings will be at the same end of the captain's bundle. This will result in one end of the bundle having an odd number of folds. The center fold can be pulled up or down the stairwell 25 feet to stretch this final 50 foot bundle. Option three, if it is determined that there is fire near the door and, fur and further away, the initial attack can be made with the 150 foot and the nozzle with the increaser. Then when the hose runs out, simply shut off the nozzle and add the remaining 50 foot section. Then reopen the first nozzle to charge the remaining 50 feet. If this option is chosen, use a Velcro hose strap to lock open the bale of the first nozzle to prevent it from being accidentally closed. This is very important. Option four, an inch and three quarter line can be added to the nozzle after removing the increaser to be used for overhaul operations, reducing both water damage and firefighter fatigue. In the rare occasion that the RIT team needs more than 150 feet of RIT line, their line may be added to the 2.5 inch in the same fashion as above. This will allow greater maneuverability and less friction loss if more 
one inch and three quarter line were added to the original line. Again, if this knot option is chosen, use a Velcro hose strap to lock open the bail of the first nozzle to prevent it from being accidentally closed. This is very important. Having seen the comparison of the two methods side by side, it is clear that the Houston option is faster. But is it safer? Its ease reduces confusion amongst all persons involved in the deployment, while allowing the captain an opportunity to genuinely assess the situation at hand before beginning the fire attack. These two benefits do make things safer. Some might point out that the Houston option only initially deploys 150 feet compared to the traditional methods 200 feet. This is true. But if the additional hose is needed, it will only take a quick minute to deploy the last 50-foot captain's bundle by grabbing the middle loop of the bundle and pulling it out. Then attach the captain's bundle to the 150 feet of already deployed line. This consistently has been timed to take less than one minute, still well below the 12 minutes needed to deploy the traditional method. In closing, I would like to again reiterate some of the benefits that we gain from this new deployment method. As you saw in the video, we were deployed and ready to advance onto the fifth floor in four minutes. The traditional method, which was executed in the video by a captain and crew familiar with it, took about 12 minutes to be ready to advance onto the fourth floor. The traditional method is certainly a good method. However, saving eight minutes, easing deployment for both the firefighters and the captains, and reducing the confusion that often accompanies these complex high-rise incidents, without sacrificing time or safety, make it worth implementing a change in tactics. Add to it that fewer members are required to achieve the same objective. Add to it that the Houston option is so simple, fill-ins and personnel unfamiliar with the method can be taught by a knowledgeable captain on the fly. Add to it that the hose engine crew can deploy the hose line without the need to await the arrival of the second fire attack group pumper crew. And finally, add to it an ability to rapidly adapt the fire attack group's tactics and hose lengths to the situation that is encountered without compromising safety. And again, you have a method that warrants the implementation of new tactics. Any questions can be directed to Captain McAllister, Station 60C, or District Chief Schleter, Station 28C. Thank you, and be safe.